Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to show three functions are linearly independent, and that's the li right here, all right? And these are the three functions here. And once again, when we are dealing with three functions, things are not so easy anymore. But pay attention to this, you can do it too. So to show linearly independency for three functions, you can just use the wrong skin. But first of all, let me demonstrate how you can still use the definition. So to show li in this case, if you want to use a definition, all right? This is what we're going to do. We're going to show that, begin with saying, OK, start off with if, uh, let me just put this down in red. If we have c1, c2, c3 multiplying with y1, y2, y3 correspondingly, if we set this up, c1, y1 plus c2, y2 plus c3, y3, and we make this equal to 0, all right? then you must show that c1 equal to c3 I mean, c1 is equal to c2, it's equal to c3, which they are all zero. This right here is the only solution, all right? So once again, in order for you to make this happen, you have to show me and argue that c1, c2, c3, they are all zero, all right? They are all zero. It's the only solution that will make this happen. Then in that case, these functions are linearly independent. So it's really different. This is harder, but I'll still show you guys anyway, because I need to redeem myself from the class today. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. And let's see, I'm just going to put this down right here. C1 times that, which is 2t minus 1. And you notice, pretty much, this is pretty much the same as the previous example, right? The only thing that's different is t squared. Anyways, continue. Plus C2 times that, which is t squared plus 5, and then plus c3 times that, 4t minus 7. I first make this equal to 0, right? I start off with that. And I have to show you and convince you the only solution to make this happen is that c1, c2, c3, they all have to be 0. There's no other solution, all right? So this is how we are still going to do it. I'm still going to distribute the c's into the parentheses. And then I will kind of separate the, uh, the terms, right? In this case, we have a highest power to be t squared right here, right? So the square is the highest power. And then we still have the linear and then the constant terms. So let me just put this down in order. So first of all, I have the t squared. And the only term that has the t squared is with c2. So we have c2 times t squared. That's the first thing, right? So this is my first one. And next, I'm going to do something like this, just like in the previous video. I'm going to look for all the terms that they have the t, and I'll factor the out the t right here in, at the end, put down the rest right here. First right here, c1 times 2, right? That's 2c1t, but I will put the t at the end, so here we will have 2c1. And I don't have any t terms in the middle, but I do have a t term here, so this is 4c3, right? So plus 4c3, that's what we have. At the end, we have the constant terms, and then just put on adding. The first constant term is c1 times negative 1, which is negative c1. Next constant term is c2 times 5, which is plus 5c2. At the end, we have c3 times negative 7, that's minus 7c3 then, and still make this equal to 0, and let's put a parenthesis around this. Okay, match coefficients. The right hand side is identically zero, right? That means this right here has to be zero. This right here should also be zero. And this right here shall also be zero, isn't it? Well, you have to, C2 is equal to zero already. You know that for sure already, isn't it? From here, I don't know what this is. I just have to say this is 2C1 plus C, 4C3 equals zero. I don't know C1, I don't know C3 at the moment. Well, for this term here, we have negative C1. And guess what? C2 is equal to 0 already, so we can get rid of this right away, right? So I just put down negative C1 right here. And I also put down just the negative 7C3 right here. Minus 7C3 equals to 0, all right? So this is what we have to solve right here. All right, so for some reason, I couldn't do something like this in the class today. That's why I'm making this video, to redeem myself. 
Anyways, I don't know why I didn't finish it in the class. But all you have to do is very easy. I'm just going to eliminate. I'm going to eliminate uh, C1. So I'll multiply everything by 2 right here, right? So you see, this is 2C1 plus 4C3 equal to 0. And then second line, you have negative 2C1 minus 14C3 equal to 0. And then uh, still right here, they cancel. This and that is just negative 10C3 equal to 0. Guess what? Come on, I don't know why I was not able to do this. Well, I didn't do this in the class. Anyway, C3 is equal to 0, right? The moment that you see C3 is equal to 0, you can plug it into here. So you are talking about uh, maybe this one if you like, but same thing anyways. This one maybe 2C1 plus 4. C3, which is 0, is equal to 0. This is 0, so you are saying 2C1 is equal to 0. C1 is, of course, 0, right? So you see? C1 is 0, C2 is 0, C3 is 0. So uh, the only solution to make this happen is that C1, which is the same as C2, which is the same as C3, they are all equal to 0. This is a quicker way to write it down instead of putting down C1 is 0, C2 is 0, C2 is C3 is 0. This is OK. Therefore, at the end, you can argue that this right here, these functions are linearly independent, right?